Welcome to Cape Breton Movers and Shakers, where we have conversations with people who are doing positive things here in Cape Breton. I'm Richard Lorway, president of GoCapeBreton.com. Today, I'm talking with Jeff McKinnon, Dan Griego, and Mick Murray from Operation Recovery in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. Welcome, guys. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you, Jeff. Good to see you all. So, Good to see you. So what is Operation Recovery? Well, it's a menagerie of things by the look of it. <laughs> we, we started off uh, back in uh, uh, probably 2009, uh, trying to put together a television show uh, depicting the recovery of ancient shipwreck sites here in Cape Breton. And uh, our whole plan was to utilize uh, the expertise and the, the great skill sets of uh, Canadian and U.S. veterans and uh, uh, former, per, former police. Uh, but that's grown to encompass first responders and uh, paramedics and you name it. And uh, anyway, we were quite successful back in uh, 2009, 2010, and we had just landed a television deal. And uh, unfortunately, through some uh, governmental interruption, we were, we, were, we were shut down. But we have been uh, pleading our case now for the past 10 years, and uh, we think we have uh, 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 Peak interest of our provincial government uh, to to carry out uh, our operation. At least it looks that way at this point. Okay, so when you say Operation Recovery, I mean I kind of infer, you know, knowing who's involved, that there's a double meaning. Part of it is recovery of artifacts, and the other part of it is recovery of, of veterans and first responders who are suffering from PTSD. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. Uh, actually. Quite often, uh, we would be blessed with uh, with uh, new team members joining our uh, our our job, which was uh, the recovery of historical wreck sites, and they would be ex-military, and they would be suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. And uh, when uh, Dan and Mick found me, somehow. Um, we had been working with, uh, with, with veterans already unbeknownst to us, like not, not that that was our, our driving, uh, our, our, our whole, um, modus operandi, it was just happened to be. So when Dan and Mick came on the scene, uh, they said, you know, this would be fantastic for, uh, people that we've been working with. And we could put the two together and 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 make a great great operation, a great show, and a, a great project. So yes, okay. The, the two gotcha. So so Dan or Mick, I guess. Um, what what makes this kind of activity a good fit for people? You know, for veterans. I'd like to say on the on the PTSD part and coming together for that. The whole, my whole reason before I had even met Jeff, my whole reason for uh, deciding to go out and try to do something like this is because I needed it. I needed it for me. I needed a mission. I needed something to do. I needed some camaraderie. I needed uh, to be around people that I used to be around, you know, being in a military special operations unit. And I found that people from all different communities were having the same problems. And when we started putting people together, uh, to do this, it was just so fulfilling for everybody. You know, it wasn't just, I found that it, my purpose that I thought was my own ended up being everybody's, you know, everybody needed it. Right. So, so what about diving? Is there something about diving in particular about being underwater and. Well, in the special operations community, most of them are combatant divers. Right. So okay. having been a combatant diver, you're skills in the water you're how comfortable you in the water you are in the water right uh, is a whole different thing you can be by yourself and you know we don't have to worry about somebody having a problem not being able to get up i had six guys that i had went to combat with that uh, i had brought into the operation and then jeff had some former police officers fbi agents 
that he had brought in there and right uh, okay. not to mention we we have uh we have uh three three notable canadian veterans who will be a surprise right uh, when the show starts getting filmed and um and uh, i think that we have um two other uh we have two other uh women uh who were combatants as well who were overseas in iraq and afghanistan and uh so i, I our team i think our core team is probably around 12 or 13 people all together between canada and the u.s uh that'll right. be our core team for the television show right so so mick how did you get involved so it's Kind of interesting because I, I first came to this via via the entertainment world. Um, I did an operation down in 1996 in Ecuador, a, a ship called the La Capitana, and it was a, a very intense operation. And I found that the fact that I could get National Geographic involved initially, they didn't actually shoot the documentary. It's, it's interesting. They fell out because we were going into what was going to be a military coup. It ended up being a congressional coup, actually, but it was a very muddy, murky operation that we were doing. But the great thing was that we were doing historically and archaeologically very sound uh, type of operation. And I found that the more I was filming, the more that we had to show in terms of the just having the uh, transparency to show the governments and I say governments, not just one, not just Ecuador, but also Peru and Spain, and as well as people in America, that we were doing this in a very sound uh, manner that was respecting these artifacts and respecting this history that we were bringing to the surface. Well, it's interesting. I was doing a film with Dan, uh, and we were filming in caves where there was no light whatsoever at about three in the morning. And when we surf resurfaced that, uh, early morning, probably around seven o'clock in the morning, we had a conversation. I said, you know, I've been thinking, I worked with treasure hunters and I love that world. I love that world of discovery. I wanna go back and do that again. But you know what I think I found in you is the perfect type of thing that was missing at the time, that perfect type of person, the ultimate salvage diver, the ultimate guy to be on your team because he had not only the military background, but he had the background of, of this too as well, where he knew that high stakes meant, high endeavors mean high stakes and at any time a life could be lost, but also he saves lives. He can save a life just as well as he could take one if need be. And the types of operations I wanted to go back into, I knew I needed a team that was gonna be not just salty salvers, but also to these guys who have these, these key skill sets and wanted to work in a different capacity where they weren't doing a military operation, but where they could use that same, same skill set, but in a much more, I should say, less um, martial environment. Right. And so that's the thing. And, and I found in him this incredible uh, calm under pressure, this really kind of beautiful, uh, Serenity. Samurai. If you talk about Don't start samurai, crying, Mick. <laughs> I, I, I know, man. I know, but but if you, you talk about like that perfect type of salver, um, there's the other guys, like for instance, meeting Jeff, knowing what he's done in terms of his historical research and the team he's brought together. This is very important to me. I didn't want to go back and do something where I was in the same type of ragtag situation. Now, all although the adventure, I have to say, really bit me in the arse. It really got me. And I love the locations we were in. I wanted to be someplace new that was really, uh, really spoke of the true nature of this, this romance of, uh, of this world. And in Cape Breton, we found it. So, so go, Mick raised the point of bringing up the artifacts and, and respecting the history and the heritage and that kind of thing. Now, I, I understand that a lot of these wrecks are in shallow water and that increasing acidification of the ocean is accelerating their decay. Is that right? That is absolutely correct. Actually, we went back and, uh, and paid a visit to a couple of different wreck sites probably about five years ago. And what people don't understand 
is there is no wreck site. There, there's a wreck site. There is no shipwreck. No. There is no mermaids crawling out of a uh, treasure box. There's no, you know what I mean? Yeah. It is barren stone. Now, the markers that we usually use, which would be cannons or, you know, other, other uh, man-made iron that would have come off of these shipwrecks, what we've noticed um, on these particular wreck sites, uh, they're disintegrating. So yeah. if there's a eight ton cannon that you would usually use as a marker to find one of these wreck sites, it's turned into brown dust. It's gone. Yeah. And nothing left. And normally what you'd have is a, uh, a uh, like a, an encrustation uh, from a chemical reaction that would take place between iron and in salt water, which would be called concretion. Yeah. Uh, the concretion has become soft. It's become soft and not protecting. Now we're not saying all wreck sites all over the world because there are lots of wreck sites that are that are protected, naturally protected, naturally immune, especially ones that are in fresh water, like the yeah. Great Lake. Yeah. Or in deep water. The, the past decade, we've seen an increase in temperature by two degrees. Right. And, I mean, that's, that's phenomenal. I mean, you look at what's going on with lobster fishing. You notice the lobsters are, are migrating north. They're trying to get to colder water. So yeah. Maine, which would normally be a very lucrative fishery, has now kind of, you know, flattened and plateaued. Yeah. And the uh, lobster fisheries up here are becoming phenomenal because the water is allowing for it. Also, you're seeing... Um, uh, signs of, of tropical fish, believe it or not, where the Gulf Stream is bending in. You're seeing tropical fish. You're seeing sharks. We have a company that has been tagging sharks that have been coming to Cape Breton now for the past three years. We have a, a, a new, a new uh, it's almost an infestation of great white sharks. And that's something that was never here before. And that is absolutely because of, of uh, climate change. So our plan is to take the most uh, the most aggravated sites uh, and and the most close to shore sites that we can think of. Five of them. We've made a proposal to the government for five sites that have been picked on or picked at for the past hundred years right. uh, by different salvage operations by whatever and. Uh, and, and show how well the private sector can work with the public sector. Right. Uh, because right now you, you could never uh, mobilize a, a treasure hunting outfit as a government agency. Not when there's 16% child poverty rates, not when there's people starving, you can't yeah. do that. You couldn't justify directing resources financially to that sector. But right now, the private sector can come in and say, okay, well, look, here's what we can do. So the proposal I've made is to the, to the government or that we've made is to uh, work on five pre-worked rec sites, uh, develop our television show over the course of five years, uh, work with the government to put a maritime museum on, on CBRM's waterfront, right. uh, a P3 model, which would be us, and the municipality and the province. Yeah. Uh, majority of the artifacts, including very fine numismatic, numismatic fine coins, would be displayed as artifacts right. and conserved in that in that maritime museum. Uh, and anything else would be would be fair game. Any damaged coins would be fair game. And what we'd like to see happen is is that would we'd probably try to develop some sort of a, a gift shop for, for tourism. Right. And so that's where we're at right now. Okay. So, so what, what, do you, where does the project stand now? You're just waiting on approval? Waiting on approval. That's correct. I'm waiting on a, a uh, five-year license from the, from the provincial government uh, to do this. And this is specifically only for Cape Breton. Um, right. Like I said, 10 years ago, we were stopped. I believe it's only fair to allow us to to go forward now in, in as a caveat to what we're trying to do. Uh, we've made the offer of uh, $350,000 over five years to various 
uh, local nonprofits. So we're bringing the money in from from for or or, or from uh, outside investment, and we're dispersing money in the community. So yeah. we would love to see uh, the museum set up where uh, students from our local schools could come, where tourists could come from uh, from from abroad uh, on cruise ships. Hopefully, we get our cruise ships back. Right, and uh, it would benefit the CBRM immensely. On top of that, what uh, what we're what we're talking about now, we have two 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 uh, different production companies vying for this project. And uh, once we get license in hand, obviously we'll choose who we're going to go with. Right. Uh, but what I'd like to see happen is that we could showcase local musicians as well, bring local musicians into into the into the show. You know, maybe you could do a, a little bit of our her historical uh, uh, musicology. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what that's what we'd like to see. And at the same time, which which is the pinnacle of our project, we're treating first responders. Now, even when we're not filming for the television show, we would continue diving and bringing different uh, different uh, uh, veterans and first responders to to Cape Breton to to dive on the the selected sites. All right. Well, that sounds fantastic. I mean, any final thoughts from any of you guys at this point? Oh, on the on the television show, Mick and I pitched this to multiple companies and nobody ever said no. And nobody said no to us. I think the biggest problem was them understanding stop to stop thinking about treasure and start thinking about what this is. It's about the people, the people's experience, what they're going through, how they're interacting with the environment around them not only the water environment, but all of uh, Cape Breton and what we're doing there and where we're going to eat and what it's like, you know, all those things. They didn't understand that. Everybody starts getting focused on treasure and like, well, can you bring this up every episode? Yeah, we could bring it up every episode, but that's not what we want this about. We right. want it about the people and the experiences that we're having and how it's impacting our life and helping everybody. Yes. Yeah, but it's hard to get somebody in Hollywood to just focus on that <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, they want another Pirates of the Caribbean. No, it's not that. Right. Well, that's the other thing too, though, Richard, is because we, my family's been into this since 1938. We are so so streamlined in doing this. We are bringing up material every mm -hmm. single dive. So yeah. it's possible for us to go and not dive and bring stuff up. So. That's why we have a uh, we have a uh, provincially approved archaeologist uh, on staff at all times. As a matter of fact, our provincially approved archaeologist uh, Jim Sinclair. We've also uh, added uh, uh, the option to the province. We would like to train a young archaeologist, maybe out of Saint Effects, maybe out of somewhere, but 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 taking that, maybe using us as their their work, uh, hmm. you know what I mean? Their work. Their thesis, uh, yeah, they, their, their PhD their, thesis on, absolutely. And that, you know, I mean, we've worked with some of the most fantastic scientists in the world, geologists, environmental scientists. This is over the years. We've brought people up here that, 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 that would benefit Cape Breton immensely in, yeah. in so many different ways, you know. Okay, super, super. Well, listen, thanks so much for your time today. Awesome. We loved it. Super. Thanks awesome. for having us. And thanks for listening to what we had to say. Oh, ha happy. My pleasure, guys. My pleasure. Very much so. And, and we can't wait to be, be there and meet you in person, in fact, and uh, just uh, get rolling on this project yet again and do it right and, and bring it home for Cape Breton and everybody else exactly. involved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Great. Thanks. Exactly. Thanks, guys. I'm speaking you. with uh, Jeff McKinnon, Dan Griego McMurray from Operation Recovery in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, and we'll see you next time on Cape Breton Movers and Shakers.